Welcome to Kess, Twin Mage. Hope you're excited. As far as opening hand goes, yes, love it. Cruel Tutor, Intuition, Young Pyromancer. We will keep on this one in a heartbeat. Playing against uh, Animar. So it should be an interesting match. Just going to get Kess popped back up. And uh, yeah, Animar always tends to be a little bit of a grindy match. Let's go and get down the Misty Rainforest. We'll grab a blue-red source off of that. I think that sounds good. Let's go and get the Misty down, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Uh, we're playing Cast Flying. During each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard. If a card casts this turn, it will be put into your graveyard this turn. Exile it instead. Playing against Animar. In fact, I'll cover Animar in just a second. Let's go and crack the Misty. Let's go and grab that uh, Steam Vents. Have it come into play tap. Not going to pay two. Nope. We are good. And we're going to get the uh, Catacombs down. Grab a Black Blue Source and go and get down Young Pyromancer. Have some fun. Let's go and crack that, and then I'll kind of explain what we've got going on deck-wise. Uh, young Pyromancer, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Playing against Animar, Soul of Elements, protection from white and black. So if we get some elemental tokens going, we'll be able to at least chump block Animar for a little bit. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one counter on Animar. Then creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Um, cost one less to cast for each plus one counter on Animar. Draw to Hero's Downfall. Okay, let's go and get down the Bloodstained Mire. You want to go for a Cruel Tutor to search something up at this point right now. Uh, let's go and push him for two first. Coming in for two. Let's put our opponent down to 27. I guess what we could do is, if we're worried about that protection from white and black, we could search up Talrand and get some extra value going. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's do that. Especially if we can have protection from white and black. I'd like to get a lot, just a lot of creatures on the battlefield as quickly as possible. I'm just going to grab another red source. Let's go and grab the Badlands. Because we can use blue off the mana confluence. Let's go for Badlands. Uh, let's go for that Cruel Tutor. It's going to be black, black. And we'll go and grab Talran. That way we can just start casting some of these spells. Um, we're going to have a Cruel Tutor in the graveyard. We'll have Intuition in the graveyard at some point. Um, that way we don't necessarily have to jam the Splinter Twin combo as quickly as possible. Let's grab Talran. There we go. It's going to go on top. And then we're going to go and pass the turn. But yes, if you did not see the deck tech, our main win condition is the Splinter Twin combo. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, that is getting down a creature that enters the battlefield and untaps when something happens. Let's say another creature enters the battlefield or a human enters the battlefield. I uh, would put Splinter Twin on one of those creatures, make a bunch of copies of it, and then swing in for lethal. So, a lot of fun. Um, you know, it is combo and commander, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, and it's just really kind of more of a safety valve for the deck. You know, what we're wanting to do is getting down Young Pyromancer and getting a really good board state developed. That's mainly what we want to do. But let's say that stuff gets out of hand, our opponent gets some crazy stuff going, we need to crack that uh, break glass in case of emergency, and that's going to be the Splinter Twin combo. That's usually how I approach uh, combo in, uh, in commander. Okay, drawn to that Talrin. Let's go and get down Mana Confluence. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. Let's get down Talran. It's going to be blue, blue, and tap the Mana Confluence for white. Why not? That'll make Talran happy. Get that down, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. So we're looking at potentially going for Kess next turn if we want to. Um, we still have Intuition to go for, so we can search our library for three cards. Uh, might end up grabbing a... Uh, do we want to swing in with the Elemental? Protection from white and black. Yeah, we'll go and swing in for one. Well, actually, we can hold it back if we need to chump block or something. Yeah, we'll just go and pass the turn to our opponent. Just to, I'm always worried when we play Animar of them getting down the bounce creatures that send everything back and they keep casting in. Animar gets really, really big. And as long as we have a creature that can stop Animar from swinging in, we'll be in a good spot. And unfortunately, with the Hero's Downfall, we're not going to be able to use Spot Removal because it does have that protection from black. So that's really going to kind of cut us off anything. But if they do get some sort of value creature or uh, one of their main enablers, we can at least use Hero's Downfall on that. All right, opponent's going to go for Cascade off the Bloodbraid Elf and the Utopia Sprawl. Okay, not too bad. But yeah, so basically, like, you know, a lot of people don't like combo and commander sometimes. The way I approach it is, um, you know, if we have combo in a deck, it's usually not the first thing that we're looking to do. We're not trying to say how quickly can we win because, uh, to me, I like to have fun in commander. That's one of the, the, uh, the appeals to it is you finally get to kind of play with all these really cool cards. But um, treating combo like a break glass in case of emergency is a great way to do it you know there are going to be some board states that you simply can't push past um, that your opponents developed and having that kind of fail safe within your deck is a great way to make sure that you um, can win if you need to all right see what we're drawn to i uh, don't really need to use the hero's downfall and both braid elf other than just getting some you know tokens on the battlefield or something like that drawn to thought scour okay so we can Thought Scour to hit the land, and then we'll be online for Kess. That may be a little risky, but then we also still have Intuition to go for. 
Let's go and do that. I think I like that. We could go for it. Yeah, let's do it now. We're going to choose us. Put those cards in the graveyard. That's going to be blue. Get Talran going. Get the young Pyromancer. Oh, yes. Exactly what we want. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun. Uh, it's fun getting down different creatures that uh, give you some bonus creatures when you start casting your spells. And then also with Kess, you know, having Thought Scour in here is a really good card. It really kind of fuels the graveyard for Kess and uh, makes for a fun game. Okay, to get the Thought Scour going, see, we we're going to put the top two cards in the library. Uh, Secrets of Dead and the Captain of Mist, and we draw into Mizzix Mastery. Anything else? We can go for that Intuition if we want to. Let's just go and pass the turn right now. Uh, we'll go for Intuition maybe during our opponent's upkeep if we're worried about a counter spell. Yeah, let's go and do that. And I kind of force them. That way, if they want to do something this turn, they're going to have to counter that. Let's go and do that now. Let's go for Intuition, choosing our opponent. We already have a Drake on the battlefield. It's not like we need to surprise them with an additional Drake or something. So we can go and force this intuition. And we'll see what they're going to search up on, the, or what we want to search up. See if they want to counter it, is what I should say. Okay, it's going to resolve. I think on this one, since we do have so many token generators, um, let's just go for some value spells. Let's go, let's go for impulse. I like impulse. Let's go for frantic search. That way we can get some extra stuff going. And then let's go ahead and grab a Terminate. Well, do we need Terminate that bad? Let's just go for Painful Truth. Let's just go for a value spread. Um, I do like the, we could go for Opt. Yeah, let's actually, let's go for Opt. So we have Frantic Search, Impulse, and then Opt. Those are all gonna be great things that we can get down. Cast for cheap, see if they wanna give that to us. Um, we could go for, we do have three tutors in here in the Cruel Tutor, Grim Tutor, and then another tutor. Um, so that's definitely a line of play that you can go for with Intuition. But with us getting down Kess next turn, hopefully we hit the land drop. That'll put us online for going for something like, um, you know, well, actually opt in the hand, so that's wonderful. So that allows us to kind of get some more tokens onto the battlefield. And we did not draw out a counter spell from our opponent, so we'll see if they're going to get down. But uh, more than likely, we're going to go for Kess next turn because we can, we've got a whole graveyard of stuff that we want to get going. And with Mizzix Mastery, if we can get to that eight, beautiful eight mana, <laughs> cast a lot of stuff. That's a lot of Talrand and Young Pyromancer triggers. Sounds like a lot of fun. But luckily, we still have Damnation in the hand, so if our opponent does get something a little bit kind of wonky going, uh, we can at least stop that with Damnation. I see what they're tapping out for. It looks like about six mana they ended up tapping for. Going for the Drake. Enters the battlefield and untap up to five lands. Okay. Going and let that go through. Um, but we're basically covered right now. We've got a 2-2 flyer in the air with Drake, and then we've got some elementals on the ground really kind of gumming the board up uh, for our opponent. So once again, just kind of re-rack. We're looking at Kess next turn. Hopefully with the land drop. If we don't, we'll just still go and get down Kess, and then we can start to impulse or a thought scour to really kind of get our graveyard going back again. See what they're going to go for. There we go. Ancestral Statue. Enters the battlefield, return an online permanent you control to its owner's hand. So, and I think at this point right now, Animar has enough tokens on it to, they can bounce the Ancestral Statue back to the hand if they want to. Actually, what did they just bounce back? I just missed that. Oh, Blood Red Elf. Excuse me. Okay. Get it, the plus one counter in there. Get the Cascade going. And they get that extra Cascade going. But yeah, with Ancestral Statue, that's, um, you know, it gets in a spot to where you, if you don't have a blocker, they just keep bouncing that and keep casting it off Animar. But if they're going to go for Bloodbraid Elf into Wall of Roots, that is uh, A-OK -okay in my book. But that's also the fun thing why I put Mizzix Mastery in here is that, uh, you know, we're working towards getting so many cards into the graveyard. And if you can go for an open, I'm just telling you, it's, ugh, I love this card. It was one of those cards where it got spoiled and I saw it and I was like, oh, that's neat. And then I had a chance to play with it and I was like, ooh. It is more than neat. That is a, is a lot of fun. I run it in Dr. Feelgood. And if you're any sort of blue-red spell slinger, definitely pick up a copy of Mizzix Mastery. It's just, I mean, you just get so much value from that. All right, Pope is going to go for Zealous Conscript, gaining control of one of our creatures. Um, I'll see what they want to go for as far as uh, gaining, you know, they can gain control of Talrand. I don't really think there's any way for them to sacrifice one of our creatures at this point right now. So there's not really that much damage that can be dealt by them going with the Zealous Conscript. So let's see if they're, oh, they're going to untap the force. Okay, go for a little bit extra mana. See if they're going to show off that. And that's going to be able to tap for, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So it still gives them about five more mana to kind of play around with. But yeah, so outside of the twin combo, so we have Splinter Twin in here. Uh, we also have Pestermite. We have Deceiver Exarch. We have Captain of the Mist which is a lot of fun. Get down the battlefield, uh, especially when you're playing on Magic Online. You get those going, and, uh, ooh, opponent's going to go for Emrakul. Okay. They're going to gain control of us during our next turn, next turn. See if we can survive this. But, uh, but yeah, so with Captain of the Mist, so whenever another human enters the battlefield, untap Captain of the Mist. So once you start to get those tokens going, you get a ton of Captain of the Mist triggers. Now, if you're playing in paper, um, and actually right now our opponent can... Uh, 
kind of swing in, kind of make a pretty bad board state for us. If they swing in with Talran and Young Pyromancer, uh, they'll be able to uh, really kind of devastate our board state. But the good thing is that we do have Damnation. So even if they do cast Damnation or something like that, it's going to clear our opponent's entire board state out. Um, so it's really, we're not that far off. At least we do have a reset button in the Damnation. But, uh, but yeah, so you get those Captain the Mist triggers, and it feels really good. Um, outside of Splinter Twin, it's going to be Kiki Jiki. And then uh, Zealous Conscripts is another way to kind of make sure we have some nice redundant stuff. And, you know, we don't really have to push the combo full throttle. You know, simply going for Zealous Conscripts on something like Emrakul is going to allow us to kind of push in on some really good stuff. All right, Pud is going to swing in with all the whole crew. And we'll see how they're going to go, because I guess they're probably going to anticipate us going for Damnation anyway. And we're actually in an okay spot to go for Damnation. I mean, uh, our opponent only has two cards in hand. Uh, we're looking at getting cast down, and then we have a bunch of value, and we have an entire graveyard to kind of restock our hand on stuff, especially with that um, Impulse and that Frantic Surge and different stuff like that. It will be a bummer, though, missing out on our token generators, but it was fun kind of getting those going. Our opponent's going to chop block on the Elemental tokens, and then Elemental... And then see if they're going to block on the flying. So that will leave us one more flying creature with the Drake. So at least we'll be able to swing in for two. But uh, we're okay with this particular board state. Okay, there we go. Opponent swings in with the whole crew. We're going to lose our entire board state. They still keep their stuff. But we're going to get our extra turn up to this one. So they're going to tap out on all their mana. I guess at this point right now, they could go for mana confluence. And if they wanted to kind of mess us up a little bit. I guess they could just go and cast Mizzix's Mastery on something. But um, they're going to have to target something, so we'll still get a little bit of extra value, even if they choose, like, uh, you know, Frantic Search or something. All right, opponent's going to go for Seer and Vision. We'll see if they're going to put that on top or not, how they want to split that up. But the main thing is we drew a card. That was one thing is that we wanted to get down a land to get down Kess, but we're still going to be going for Damnation, so at least we'll get a reset button on this one. All right, Potus going to go for Mizzix Mastery on Frantic Search. Draw two cards. Ooh, there we go. So they go Mizzix Mastery on Frantic Search. Draw two cards, discard two cards. So they're going to be able to actually discard Damnation. Nice play by our opponent. I didn't even see that line, that particular line. So we're going to draw two cards, and they're going to discard. I would assume that they're going to discard Damnation. Maybe they want... Oh, there we go. It's the first one they selected. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's fair enough on that one. But yeah, that's good. I didn't even see that line. That's a pretty good line by our opponent. So that still leaves us Heroes Downfall. Uh, but with the Emrakul out on the battlefield, with the um, protection from instants, uh, we're not going to be able to target that. So I'm not really sure what we're going to be able to get into as far as next turn. Uh, we can still get down Kess. We're going to be able to... Let's see what uh, we draw into how our opponent scryed it. I think they left the... Oh, Dak Faden. Okay. <sighs> let's go and get the Urborg down. So at this point right now, they swing in 13. That's going to be 16. That's going to be 19. It's going to be 22. That will be lethal if they swing the whole crew, and especially with Animar out there protection. So we'll at least be able to chump block on that. Um, Emrakul does have Trample. I guess let's go ahead and if we get down Kess, we chump block on the Animar. They swing it for 13, 16, 19. We can still Heroes Downfall on something. Yeah, if we go for Kess, that puts us online for Damnation the next turn, but I don't know if we're going to be able to survive until next turn. Let's just go and do that. Let's go for Kess. Maybe they don't swing in the whole way or something. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we're going to go blue-red. Tap out for red. Tap out for blue. And tap for one more off the Urborg. And then we'll go ahead and get down the search for Azkenteca. Azkentha. And then uh, maybe kind of see our way out of this. Who knows? We'll tap for blue. We'll tap for black off the Mana Confluence. But yeah, that Emrakul really uh, really did us, undid us. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. So somehow if we do, we can survive, you know, there's a 3-2 out there, 3-4 body. But I think if I added it up right, that's going to be, um, it's going to be 16. That's going to be 19, 22. And then 24. So we can at least still chump block on the Bloodbraid Elf. It's going to be a 3 4 body. It'll be 19 21. And we still have the Drake to chump block on Animar. I think we'll be left at 1, and that still gives us damnation out of the graveyard. Now, they have some sort of spot removal on one of our creatures, so be it. But I think if I did the math really quick, uh, we might be left at 1, depending on how our block and how our opponent wants to swing in. So we'll still keep our fingers crossed if we're going to get out from underneath this one. But yeah, this is the exact reason why we do have the Splinter Twin combo built into this deck. Let's say our opponent's board state really gets out of hand like this. Um, we obviously want to push the Young Pyromancer Talran game plan because it's a lot of fun to get tokens going. But if we get in the spot to where it's not looking good for us, <laughs> we've got a few more turns to live. If we can Court of Calling for six, okay. <laughs> we'll see what this is going to be. Uh, but yeah, so if we get in the spot to where you know, it's not looking so hot, um, falling back on the Splinter Twin combo is always really good especially in Grix's colors. But I'm excited to start recording with Kess. 
Um, really excited that I got her deck built. Um, once again, I don't think I have a Grixis deck for my channel and to build a little bit more of I've been on a really nice uh, Wooden Bellower. Okay, search your lobby for a non-legendary creature card. Uh, I've been on a really big uh, grindy commander kick lately. Like when I first started my channel, I built a lot of fun decks, you know, when I get Rock Enchantress, a lot of stuff that just didn't have a lot of removal in there, however you want to say it. And so uh, to kind of build these decks that have a lot of basic building blocks, it's a lot of fun. And so um, it's always fun to also challenge yourself with Commander. So if you're a Commander player and you just play a lot of aggro style decks, you know, throw together a control deck, throw together like a blue-white control deck or something like that. I'm just going to go for Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Okay, it's going to be on top of the library. No, excuse me, it goes into the hand. All right, so the swinging with the crew. Let's go ahead and chump block the Drake on the 8-8. Eight, eight. Let's do some math real quick. It's going to be 16. It's going to be 19. It's going to be 22 coming across. And then 2. So we need to chump block at least on one of the three creatures. So it's going to be 16, 19, 21. I think that allows us to... Yeah, we're going to put down to 1. It's still going to leave us on Damnation. All right. We still have Kest 2 to kind of go for the Damnation. And then anything else. No. All right. We can still get a little bit extra value, but we need to go for that uh, the actual Damnation. Let's see if we hit off search for um, Azkentha. Dax Duplicate, if you cast it, you gain control of it. We could Zealous Conscripts on the Emrakul swinging in, but they still have the Woodland Bellower. Yeah, we need to go for Damnation. Yeah, we're going to put Dax Duplicate in. Well, no. No, we're okay. We'll draw that into the hand. Yes, yeah, so we're going to transform that one. It's going to be another land for us. We'll get that Dax Duplicate in the hand. If we're going to go for Damnation, yeah, actually, let's sequence it this way. I'm just going to swing in for three. They don't have reach. Is that correct? No, they do not have reach. Let's go and push in for three. <laughs> there stands Kess against an entire board state of Animar. So it makes magic fun. All right, swinging in for three. I'm just going to put our opponent down to 24. We're on the board for three total commander damage. Um, let's go and go for the Dak Faden. We don't want to tap that mana confluence. Let's go for Dak Faden. That's going to be uh, blue red and then black we're going to draw two cards discard two cards and the hero's downfall we can get rid of it if we need to blood crypt we're going to get rid of blood crypt and then yeah Ristic, i like holding on to hero's downfall we're going to get rid of uh, Ristic study and then blood crypt let's go and go for the damnation out of the graveyard it's going to be black black and make sure we tap the mana confluence for black off the herb board go for damnation destroy all creatures Reset the board state, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, our opponent does have Kozilek in the hand. Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So even if they make the land drop, they're looking at 8. So depending on what they get out there, we might be able to get down Dax Duplicate. Um, kind of go for a little value play, but we'll, we'll see what our opponent's going to get out there. But stabilizing it, I'm not saying we're stabilizing right now, but getting to one life and then stabilizing is a really fun thing to do in Magic. I definitely enjoy it. Opponent's going to go for Soul of Harvest. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may draw a card. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Our opponent doesn't have any artifacts. Uh, we can go for Hero's Downfall. Do we want to go for Dax Duplicate on that? Do draw into Gamble. So we're looking at Kess. Kess is going to be 6 total mana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be us completely tapping out for the turn, unless we need to go for Gamble. Um, let's go ahead and go for... Let's plus up on Dak Faden. Draw two cards, discard two cards. Torrential Gear Hulk. So let's definitely go and get rid of uh, Painful Truths because we do not want that. And actually, I do like Gear Hulk in this one. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's get rid of Gamble. Get rid of Gamble. And what we can do is um, we can go for Hero's Downfall on the Soul of the Harvest. And we can also go for Dax Duplicate. And then we have Torrential Gear Hulk back up on the back end. I think I'd like that. Let's go Heroes Downfall. Let's go Dax, excuse me, let's go Dax Duplicate first. It's going to be red, blue, and then tap out for one on the search as, as Kentha. You know, the battlefield is a copy of Soul of Harvest. Let's go and go for Heroes Downfall on that. It's going to be black, black, and then tap the Mana Confluence for one. And then, I can't, yeah, let's just go and swing in for six. I mean, I guess technically we have to watch out for a hasty creature, but I like getting a clock going. Um, we have Torrential Gear Hulk to get that down. Uh, we can flash that in. We also have Dethrone coming across. It's going to be 7-7. Seven, seven. 
I like getting a clock going. You know, we're looking at a two or three turn clock, and then especially once we go uh, torrential gear hole, getting that down. All right, we're going to go to pass. If they have a hasty creature, they have it. Then we've got one card in the hand, and that is Kozilek, so we don't really have to worry about that at this point right now. And then we might actually be able to go and get down Kess, too, so we can kind of have that little bit of backup. But if we stabilize at one, <laughs> sounds pretty good. I like it. All right, let's see what our opponent's going to go for. We are dead to a burn spell, so if our opponent has a burn spell in here, so be it. It's going to be one, two mana. Animar's going to get down, okay. Protection from black. Now, protection from white and black, what we can do is simply just leave up Soul of the Harvest, and then we'll be able to at least kind of stop Animar from swinging in. We will not be online for Torrential Gear Hulk and Hero's Downfall, though, with that protection from black. But we'll see if there's something else that we can go for off the Torrential Gear Hulk to get some other stuff going. Um, we have Cruel Tutor to go for, but that's going to be losing two life, which we don't want to go for because we're at one life. Um, <laughs> we'll see what we're going to go for. Now, as far as Dak Faden goes, if we get to that minus six, we get an emblem that says whenever we target, um, the targets one or more permanents, gain control of those permanents. So we might be able to uh, get Dak going sometime. If we can get an ultimate at one, that'd be pretty cool. sweet. Drawn to Underground River. Let's go and get that down. <sighs> yeah, I guess at this point, protection from white and black. We need to leave up Soul of the Harvest against Animar. What we can do is we can flash in Torrential Gear Hulk if we want to swing in for seven. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's go and push in for seven. Since the Torrential Gear Hulk does have, yeah, it does have, I kind of like that. Let's go and push in for seven. It's going to put our opponent down to 10. The Gate Creeper Vine's not going to be able to swing in. The Kozilek counts at 10, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Getting really close to that Kozilek. Yeah, we're going to push in. I, I like that. Let's push in for seven. Get the dethrone going. It's going to be an 8-8 eight, eight body. Put them down to 9. And if they do cast Kozilek, they're going to be able to draw some cards. We'll still have Torrential Gear Hulk on the uh, Annihilator 4. Yeah, we'll still have Torrential Gear Hulk on the Hero's Downfall. All right. Pushing in. And I guess at this point, we'll still go ahead and plus up Dak Fade and draw two cards, discard two cards. We're going to hold on to the Torrential Gear Hulk. So at this point right now, we're basically just um, getting some more cards into the graveyard from when we finally do get down Kess. So we're going to put down Sunken Ruins in the graveyard and then Delay. Leaving up Torrential Gear Hulk. All right, then we're going to go and pass the turn. So we have Torrential Gear Hulk up. We can also go for the uh, As uh, As Kantha activation if we want to go for that. And then um, hopefully maybe kind of stabilize from here. If our opponent thinks they're going to be able to swing in with Animar, um, who knows, we might be able to catch them off guard with the Torrential Gear Hulk. I don't think they hit Fauna Shaman. Okay. Get two plus one counters on it. Or get a plus one counter on it. I, whenever I get a nervous tick, I bounce my knee, and I'm bouncing my knee <laughs> really bad right now because I'd love to close this out. And we also get in a spot if they don't swing in for some reason. We get the Dak Faden gun, we go to Heroes Downfall, we gain control of one of their creatures uh, once we have that online. Our opponent's going to go for Kozilek, like Butcher of Truth, enters the battlefield, draw four cards, get a plus one counter on Animar. It's going to make it a 4 4 body. So see if they're going to swing in with Animar. We'll be able to chump block with the Torrential Gear Hulk. And as far as next turn goes, we, uh, we'll see what we can do. And see if they're swinging in at us or they're going to swing in at Dak Fate. Now they are swinging at us. Let's go for the Torrential Gear Hulk. It's going to be blue. And tap as Kenteka. Tap black. <laughs> so nervous tapping some of those, those mana confluence lands. It's really uh, nerve wracking. <laughs> Make sure you don't lose one life. Flash and Torrential Gear Hulk. We're going to draw a card off that. Sold the Harvest. And let's go and go for the Torrential Gear Hulk on Hero's Downfall. We're going to go and cast that targeting, uh, yes. We're going to choose Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Get out of here, Kozilek. They're going to shuffle it back into the graveyard, but they did draw four cards, so they've got some new cards in there. At least we're going to get a uh, card draw off the uh, Soul of the Harp. It's drawn to Kyrnos, okay. All right, opponent scoops it up. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> got the gear hulk down, we had Soul of the Harvest coming across, and then we had Dak Faden. So, I mean, it wasn't technically over, but our opponent scooped it up. I guess that was enough for them to uh, get rid of Kozilek. It was enough for our opponent to go and have them scoop it up. So I'll definitely take that. Look at us stabilizing at one. A win's a win. And, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.